Good morning. Good morning. Um, this sermon's brand new, and it was was kind of working on a pro life sermon, and you know, for a couple of weeks. But yesterday, in the prayer meetings, of Sophia shared from Jeremiah eighteen uh, about the potter and the clay, and um, and I believe right afterward, the Lord birthed this sermon, and so I just want to get into it. It's called the specifications of God. The specifications of God. Now, as you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a project manager, and this is what we call the spec book. This, I hope Omar's watching, but maybe he's not. Omar, this is a spec book. So, in, in, the, in the Walmart world, this is our holy grail. Like, everything that's done on the job has to be uh, in accordance and in compliance with what the engineers and architects have said, this is, the, this is what I want. If they... It deals with all the trades, metal and wood and, and concrete. And if and if and if the um, if the plumber says I have golden screws I want to put in there, they will say no, we don't want the golden screws. We want the screws that the engineer has specified for this project. We want the stainless steel screws. Many people argue with me and say, but but what we want to give you is better. And they say we want what we have asked for because the engineers have built the job based on these specifications and tolerances. So, so they don't want what everyone else thinks is best because in the end of the day, they want a, a consistent product. They want to know it's safe. And, 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 if, and if there's a failure, uh, a structural failure, they go back and say, was the specifications followed? You know, and so this has to be our guide. Um, it's exact. Spe of, of project specifications. In all things, we're to refer to this and see if what we're building is, is complying or will it overlay with the specifications of the engineers. I didn't bring this book to throw the book at you though, Matthew. But this is, this is our specifications, our project specifications. So it was just in my mind um, really to preach this sermon on specifications. This is what specifications are, an act of describing or identifying something precisely or of stating a precise requirement or a standard of workmanship, materials required to be met in a piece of work. And so God has his specifications for his world, um, for his church, for his people, for you and, and for me. God has an exact set of specifications for us. We weren't born uh, complying with these specifications. And just like the plumber who wants to give a gold screw instead of a stainless steel screw, so often people want to build their lives their own way with their own set of specifications, their own manual. But in the end, will it line up with what God wants? So at the end of a Walmart project, guess what happens? The inspectors all come. You can build whatever you want. You can ignore, you can forget, you can set aside, and you can do what you want. But in the end, the inspectors all come out like ants and they check everything. And if there's something out of specification, it gets rejected. You have to take out all those, uh, you know, shut off valves. You know, if they're not Apollo, leaf color crane, a blue, yellow, or white, you got to take them out. You might have used something better. You might plead your argument. They will say, that is not what we want. Get them out of here. Yeah. So at the end of our life, there will also be inspections upon this world, upon our churches, upon the country, and upon you and I. And if, and if our life are not built according to the specifications that God has, God has extremely specific specifications for you and for me, for our country, mm -hmm. for our life, for our world, extremely specific. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason we're in the condition we're in now is because we have not followed the specifications of God. Somewhere along the way, we decided to throw this book aside and say, we're going to do this society our own way. We're going to do this world our way. We're going to live our way. We have a better way. But in the end, we will be inspected as well. Yeah. And God, God didn't lower his expectations. Mm -hmm. God didn't lower his specifications. They are exact for you and for me, exact. 
but it's just that Christ met every expecta expectation of compliance in this book, every requirement, every specification. God didn't lower the standard. It's just that Christ kept every specification for you, and then he bought you and I, and now he's working those specifications in you. He's conforming you and me to the specifications of God, without which no one will see the Lord. And so when you say, why is society going off? Why have we gone off? It's because we've gone a different way. And, and now the consequences are that we've built a society that doesn't line up with the specifications and requirements of a holy, righteous God. And there's failure. There's structural failure. It's happening now. If you go back and you examine the things that were used to build, there were wood, hay, and stubble. And they're all failing now. But in your life and in my life, it really, it really matters. It really means something that when I want to do something one way, when I sin, when I fall, God says, come back to my specifications. I have a, I have a, I have a vision for your life. I have a plan for your life. I have exact specifications for your life. And I'm, and I'm going to, and I'm going to get you there, but you have to repent and say, I'm sorry for building my way. I, that, that thing that I wanted was not in God's specification for my life, that, that, that way that I was going. So that's what repentance is. It's coming back to the specifications of God. God had clear specifications, and they started in the garden. Here's a scripture in 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians 3.12. It says, For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, if any man builds upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try everyone's work to see what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built, where, whereupon he shall receive a reward. If a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire." Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God ye are. You know, even my family's on here today. So they knew, they saw me. Like, if you see two different me's, like one, the old, the old person and the new person, the only difference between those two is one's conforming to the, to the standards of Christ and surrendering to the standards of Christ. God bought you and he saved you, but now he's got to fix you. Now he's got to repair you and do all this work to build you according to the specifications, to, to change the course of your life. You were going this way. You were building this way. We were using these inferior products. And now God says, no, I want holiness. I want righteousness. I want stainless steel screws. I want the best. I want the best for you. God wants the best for me. And it's a constant struggle. I, I, you know, I grab my spec book. I'm, I'm doing, you know, the world tells you, build your own kingdom, get your own money, have a house, do this, do that. Those are the specifications of the world. Invest in the stock market. God says, share the gospel, surrender to me, give. And, and so, and so it, 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 there's two different patterns here. One's inferior. That's what we see here. And one is eternal and it can't be burned up. If we do things God's way, in the end, when the inspectors come, They'll, they'll find Christ in us. They'll find the image of God stamped on us and the specifications of God. And there won't be any deviations written up. That's how God perfects us with his, with his um, specifications. The opening scripture, so the, so the sermon is the specifications of God. The opening scripture is in Hebrews 8.5. Hebrews 8.5. Eight, five. 
And here Paul is talking about Moses receiving direction for the, for the earthly temple, which was to be a, co a copy of the heavenly temple. But he says, he's speaking about God's specifications for the temple. He says, they serve as a shadow of heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God saying, see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. We have an exact God. We have a precise God. And, and his, his specifications for humanity are specific and precise, and they're perfect. And God intends to bring us back to that. But we're out of spec right now. In a job, when the engineers come in or we talk shop, we say, it's out of spec. That's out of spec. Mm -hmm. You have to take that out. So this world is out of spec. The church is out of spec because we built our own way. God won't allow it. It has to come back to the specifications of God's law and order. In Genesis 1, we lowly mortals can view the eternal triune God of the universe, creating everything that existed to his perfect and exact specifications for the good of every created being. To enrich their existence, God created order and separated the light from the darkness, the waters from the dry ground, the stars and the moon to give us gentle light, a peaceful rest by night, and the sun to give us light and growth by day. Specific. We see the eternal perfection of God and the very stamp of his divine character over all his creation, flourishing without a flaw of imperfection or death or disease or deterioration was the express mark of God's perfection and intention for us all, his created beings. It was not until sin found its way into our world through the disobedient act of our first parents that both man and nature began to fall away from the holy, righteous specifications, the perfect order of God that he had laid down for his cre creation to keep us happy, safe, and prosperous. It was not until man reached out his hand for something other than what God intended them to have were the perfect specifications of the Lord compromised by our own restless will and the pattern of perfection began to unravel before the eyes of our first parents. The Bible tells us this in Romans 5.12, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because of sin, disobedience, variance from the pattern that God had entrusted to our first parents. The specifications of God were compromised and the hard consequence of sin came into God's perfect creation at that time. I say the specifications were compromised, but not the perfection of God. It was man. It was an act of free will that our parents walked away from the holy standards of God. God didn't fail. His specifications didn't fail. His righteousness didn't fail. A man had, 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 had reached out for something else rather than this book. They, and and it, was our, it was the beginning of the great slide that we're now caught up in. It was man in the garden that forfeited the robes of perfect light of righteousness that God had clothed them with from the beginning. But the righteousness of God remained intact as this righteous standard for man. It was just that man could no longer conform to them because he lost his righteous covering. And the ability to have those holy standards stamped upon his very nature because our nature was corrupting. And as you were speaking about the, um, the clay, I was just thinking about, you know, clay is soft and the potter, you know, he's, he's molding that clay, but it's, it's soft. But when man had sinned, the clay began to harden and the impression that God had stamped upon men began to, be, began to not, not conform to the standards of God. And we began to spiral away. Man began to spiral away from the precepts of God's law and order. That's how it happened. From his righteous intentions for men and, and, 
from the very specifications meant to keep us in the way of holiness. Just like a child when they're young, they're with you, they're listening, they're, they're, they're learning, and then you begin to see, you know, where they don't want to surrender to God's order. And that's the rebelliousness in our heart. Man had disqualified himself on that dreadful day there in the garden from forever being able to achieve and maintain the righteous requirements of God. We can never keep the requirements or the specifications now. Our righteousness was lost. It was compromised. We lost our ability. That's when the Lord came rushing into the garden to save his creation with new coverings. He clothed them. He clothed their nakedness. He immediately gave them the promise of a savior who would come to liberate them by crushing the serpent's head to, de to deliver them by sending his own son to pay the full price of our rebellion to bring us back to God's order, to die for their very sins and to be raised from the dead in order to establish a better perfection, a better righteousness than the one that was forfeited, mm -hmm. the righteousness of Christ, that he could simply impute or credit to their account by faith that would cover their nakedness by faith, cleanse their sin, restore the image of God upon lost humanity, upon his creation, and put a legal end to the curse and consequence of sin forever over all of God's creation. And by sac his sacrifice, bring all things back to the, to the, so into subjection of God. So Christ saw that the specifications had fallen to the floor. Sorry. And he came and he lifted them up. I just want to make sure no one was sleeping. <laughs> he lifted them off of our back. The, the specifications were crushing us. The law was crushing us because God didn't set it aside. Amen. He didn't say, oh, well, my, my creation slipped. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw the book out. The book continued on us. God's requirements never ceased. It, it was crushing us. And Christ came down and he, he complied with the book. He fulfilled all righteousness. He, he kept every specification and he lifted it up. And he brought us with him and he gave us the credit for keeping their law for the righteousness of God. And now through the process of sanctification, he's going screw by screw through our life saying, this has to go, this has to come in because he bought us and he saved us. But now he's bringing us back to the order and righteousness of God that was lost in the garden. The specifications of God can now be restored upon a fallen race by the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. That's the only way society, my family, your family, it's the only way we can come back into God's perfect specifications. Many people think God laid them aside and that we're under law. We're under law and grace. The law wasn't set aside. It's just that Christ picked up the law. Mm -hmm. And now he's giving us the credit for keeping the law. So it's easy to think the law was set aside because we're under grace, but it wasn't set aside. Right. Christ completed the law. So God's, God's looking down upon the society and upon us. He still wants perfection. He still wants exact mm -hmm. specifications. Mm -hmm. And when I struggle you know, in my life to be something else. And God says, no, but this is what, this is the specification you have to carry. This is holiness. You, you know, I don't want you listening to these things and watching these things and doing these things. You know, that's the specifications of God coming down. So we're not under the law. Well, we certainly are under the specifications of God. And the inspectors will check in the end to check and see if we conform to the image of Christ. So it's wrong theology to think Grace has lifted us up, but Christ kept the law, and now he intends to impress upon our fresh hearts and nature the very stamp and character of God, which Amen. is the specifications of heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's happening now. It's happening to us as we resist, and then we go back and we repent and say, God, I didn't want to go that way, but yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That's soft hearts. That's, that's God stamping his specifications of holiness and righteousness into the believer. 
For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. He lifted us up. But the law could not do. The law wasn't weak. God wasn't weak. The specifications weren't weak. It says in that it was weak through the flesh. The flesh failed. Adam failed. And where Adam failed, Christ came, came in, the second Adam, to lift up humanity back to the specifications of God. That's the message of the church. That's the message from the pulpit. That's the uncompromising message of the cross. And, and, and that God, 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 God didn't waive the standards. They're still applicable. There will be a judgment. That the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We're, we said Jesus' yoke is light. He lifted it all up. And, and we're just supposed to walk by the spirit now with him. Amen. Do what, you know, by the strength of the spirit, we go forward. We do what we have to do. It always falls short, but Jesus makes up the difference. He always makes up the difference in our lives where we fall short of the specification. And that will always be true. And that's why we cling to his righteousness and his specifications. I want to read Hebrews 2. Verse three, two, three. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard it. God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with diverse miracles, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to the will of God. For unto angels has he not put in subjection the world to come, wherefore we speak, but one in a certain place testifying, saying, what is man that thou mindful of him, or the son of man that thou should visit him. You have made him, Christ, a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with the glory and honor and did set him over all the works of your hands. Thou hast put all things under subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that was put under him, but now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons to glory to make them the captain of their salvation, perfect through suffering. For though he that sanctifies and he that who, who are sanctifies are all one in which case he is not ashamed to call them his brethren saying I will declare your name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing again to thee for as much as the children are partakers in flesh and blood. Verse 14, he also likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brothers, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in all things he himself suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Just speaking about Christ, um, 
in the end, putting all things into subjection, bringing all things back, back. Christ came to save man, and we think of that, but he also came to bring all things back into the specifications of God that were, that were lost through sin, the world, death, the, all of creation groans, the Bible says, and Christ, Christ won it all back when he came on Calvary's cross, when he defeated death, when he rose from the grave, he received the title and, and, and all things are subjected to him. The Bible says every knee will bow, it, the, the righteous and the unrighteous, the, the Christian and the non-believer, every thing will be brought back into the specifications of God, willingly or by force. We're going there willingly. God is bringing us there willingly, but every knee will bow in this world as the specifications of this world are just wicked. And, you know, the laws and the things that are happening every day are just so out of spec. They can't work. They can't bless. They can't bring happiness. They can't heal. The impression of the devil is being stamped upon a generation of young people. The specifications of wickedness stamped on them before they can even know what's right or wrong as Christians sort of stood by and allowed it to happen. But God is not going to let that happen. It won't last. It can't last. It's going to be rejected. And, 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 and it's the scriptures alone, Amen. as you see with Dawn and, 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 and Emilio, as you see with the young people, it's, the, it's when they're subjected to the scriptures Amen. That, Amen. The, that the stamp and the Amen. specifications of God begin to begin to come. You you see it stamped on their Amen. character. You should see see Madison now sharing and praying and you Amen. know and all of us had uh, you know are, are having that now. Raphael, like you know, the stamp of God is on your life when you're preaching, when you're sharing, when you're listening to the Holy Spirit and buying chili. Amen. That's the That's stamp right. of God that, into your soft new heart. Uh, uh, apart from scripture, we would just be following the course of this world and, and all the things that are um, in preaching about the yoke. One of the things, and that's not today's sermon, but when you put your head in the yoke and your shoulders with Christ and he lifts and carries, he's plowing the fields of God. But when we were born, our neck was in another yoke. We were plowing the fields of the wicked. But we were doing his will. We were living by his specifications. And Christ calls us away from that. So we go away from one thing, one yoke, and, and we get harnessed to another. Mm -hmm. When we were in the world, we were doing all the lifting. The devil made us carry that whole load. And now with Christ, we put our neck and our head in the yoke. That's easy. And his burden is light. And he carries the load. Mm -hmm. And we're with him. We're, we're pushing. We're doing what we can. But he's mm -hmm. making up the difference of God's standard. He has put all things under subjection of Christ. That's how we'll, we'll bring it all back. That's how this nation, the world, will all be brought back into this, into this um, specifications of God. So the very specifications of God that could not be kept by man were stamped upon the divine man. Mm -hmm. They were stamped upon the second Adam who came to do this work, who took on our nature, but without sin and lifted once more the very specifications of God off the feeble backs of mortals and carried it all the way to Calvary's cross, to the grave, to the resurrection, and then right into heaven. Christ did it all and brought it all into heaven. The specifications of God were satisfied. And God said, it's good enough. It's, 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 uh, I accept it. And then, he, and then he purchased us with his blood. So the specifications of God, all of them are, 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 are complete in you now. They're, they're given to you as a gift. It's the perfection in Christ. And now we just need to surrender to them surrender to them every time we see ourselves going off every time we see society going off every time we see our ministers going off we call all things back yeah. into subjection to christ that's our job yeah. one of the things sophia was talking about in that video was um you know it was crystal clear this week that uh um this apology at church was they believe that their duty was to go to city councils, to go to legislators and magistrates and call them back into conformity with, with God's law 
and say, you are obligated. Amen. You took an oath. Amen. You Amen. are obligated. And, and we're here to support you and pray for you and encourage you. But you are, God put you here and you are in, you are obligated to do righteousness and to keep the laws of God and to bring things back into, into God's order. And if you enact laws that are unholy and unrighteous, we don't have to keep them. Yeah. And we want you to keep them. And, and we want lower magistrate to go to higher magistrate and resist and resist tyranny the way that the constitution was set up. Uh, uh, you know, not just to roll over. And, and, and so, so that we can just continues to slide down. Lower magistrates are to say to higher magistrates, you're obligated. And we're to say to, to the magistrates in our field, you are obligated mm -hmm. to stop the death of these unborn babies, to legislate righteousness and to do right. And we'll talk more about that, but that was a crystal clear message that we, we received um, fr from some of the apology of ministers. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, it just men sta and, and women standing at city councils telling them you're required to keep the law of God. You're the last defense against wickedness. If you go down, we all go down. It's just like in ancient Israel, God gave them judges and the judges were supposed to do right and judge right. But when the judges go down, the society goes down and, 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 and God will honor the, uh, the, the legislator and the, and the, and the, and the uh, magistrates he puts in place to hold back the, the tide of judgment. If a, if a magistrate, if, a, if, a, if, if they can just get back to God's requirements and say, yeah, yeah, we can't do this anymore. Let's, let's, it stops here. We don't, it doesn't have to go all the way to Washington. It's just right here. The, the sheriff's department, the city council come back to God and ministers from the pulpit requiring them to do what's right. And that's what we see in apology at church. Come back to the standards of God. We're sliding. We're slipping. God put you here, Romans 13, to do what is right, regardless of what Gavin Newsom says, That's regardless right. of what right. Biden says. Right. You have an, an obligation to God and to the Constitution and to us to do what's right. So that's the new direction that we are seeing that. And, and that starts in the pulpit because... Honestly, the world is so dark right now that the only people that can see the truth, the light, or God's order are the Christians. So the last bastion of hope in this country, in this world, are the Christians saying, that's not right. We seem so queer and so peculiar right now saying homosexuality is not right. Uh, you know, uh, having abortions is not right. It, it seems peculiar to this world. But it's peculiar. We're saying we, we don't want that copper bolt. We want the we want the silver bolt that God said. See, see, we lowered that we lower the standards. We're like, ah, you know, we don't need this page. We don't need this. Here, let's just turn to this good stuff. But God says, no, all of Amen. it. All of it. Amen. All of it in my life. Amen. All of it in your life. All of it in our city. All of it in city council. Yes all of it in the, in, the, in the White House, and we can never say we don't have the authority to lower what God did in the garden and giving us these high, holy specifications for how he wanted humanity to live. And we look out the window, we're not living that way. So what can we do? We raise the book and we say, it's right here. You can't, you can't lower this. We demand you to keep this. You're put in, and when you stop keeping this, we all go down because when you don't do your job, legislator, then God has to do his job. Then wrath has to come and judgment has to come. They're actually holding back wrath and judgment right now. Our judges, to do what's right, God would honor them and Amen. hold back the wrath. If they don't do what's right, then God has to bring judgment. So this is what the ministers need to be doing from the pulpit is raising up the scriptures as the as the last standard every word of it no compromise just this is the way back to god repentance is i've done it my way and and i've crashed against the rocks god i want to do it your way i can't do it but i can certainly give mental assent to your ways i can say yes there should be a stainless steel bolt there yes i should be living a certain way 
The Bible just says, agree with God and be at peace. Agree that the specifications are God's standard for this country, for this nation, for our city council. We can't ever lower the standard. And that's what happened when, 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 the, when the lights are all going out, when the, water's, when the water's coming up and we're on the sinking Titanic and all the ministers are keeping quiet and somebody says, out of the water Amen. comes a book Amen. and it's an arm and it's like, here's the way back. Here's the scriptures. This is God's standard. If you honor this, God will honor you and God will save us. So the, the ministers need to be yelling that now. And we all need to be just surrendering to every, to every specification God has laid down for humanity. In the 50s and 60s, we had better, more compliance. And look how, look how the peace of the 60s and 70s were, was more com it was more in line with where we were at in our obedience to God and the wickedness that has that didn't flow in at that time. Now that the wickedness flows in, now that the standards of God are compromised, so the hell flow just the tide of hell comes right in with it. You lower a standard, you take out a bolt, it hell comes in with it. God gave us every bolt there to hold back hell. God gave us every beam and his specifications. And you see, when Adam and Eve just took one bolt out, it all came unraveled. Mm -hmm. Only through Christ. If it wasn't for Christ, we would never, we would just be crushed and lost. He came in and said, I got the book. He's the only one who has the book of God's specifications. Nehemiah had it. He lifted it up and the people Amen. wept. Remember the specifications of God? Remember when we lived like this? Remember when we treated each other like this? Remember when children... Young people were holy and didn't think about, you know, premarital sex. Remember, remember those, that was, that was the blessing of God. This was the insulation and the protection on our lives. And so it's the church, it's the church right now. It's, it's the only, it's just the church. The Bible says that the gates of hell won't prevail against the church Amen. if the church stands up, if the church That's insists right. on God's standards and doesn't preach a wishy-washy grace. Let's, uh, there's no standard. There's no inspection. There's no hell. There's no judgment. Yes, there is. Yes. The standards of God are so high we can't reach them. But Christ reached them. And now we reach to Christ. And we're all one. And God says, you're welcome. Come in. But we never say that the standard was lower because look out the window and you see what happens when you take a bolt out and a screw or something that God says, why did he give it to us? Why did God put this bolt there? I don't need this. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You need them all. We, I need everything that God says I need. My heart, my interest, my time, it, it all has to conform. So we just need to be soft. We need to stay soft. The stamp of God on the believer. Because of what Jesus Christ accomplished on Calvary's cross, God is now able to pull you out of a sin-sick world, wash you clean by his own perfect blood, give you a new heart, because Jesus kept the standard. Change your very nature from depraved to holiness. My family can say amen to that. I was depraved. Reverse the course of your life, deliver you from evil and the consequences of sin, and stamp a fresh imprint of the holy character of God himself on your very nature once more to bring you back to God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and he'll do it. He'll begin to change your life. Just believe, just cling to Christ, just come to Calvary's cross, just get under the blood, and he'll begin to imprint. Well, first he'll change your heart, then he'll begin to imprint God's standard for your life, what God wants for your life, the purposes, the missions, the things that God wants to do to a surrendered life by bringing us back into the subjection to his will. Here's a scripture, and I will sanctify my name, my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. 
And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. This is coming from Ezekiel 36, but we're not done. Verse 24, for I, here's God's plan for you, for I will take you from among the heathen, which he did. I will gather you out of the countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Oh my goodness, what a promise. So there's a benefit to the specifications of God. There's a benefit from losing things of this world to gain eternal things. You might have the biggest bank account right now. You might have the best <clears throat> job, but you, if you don't have the peace of God, and you don't have joy. Sometimes you just get joy. You just wake up and say, I got joy. I don't even know why. I just got joy. I'm like, I couldn't get this from the world. I couldn't get this with my own specifications. I couldn't get this. The things that God gives us, plus to save us and bring us to heaven. I mean, it's everything. The eternal specifications reap the benefit, the eternal benefits. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a new heart of flesh. You see what God wants to do for his children, for his church, for our nation. This is God's heart. This is his specification, but this is his heart. I want to do this. I wanted to bless you. I wanted to protect you. I wanted to keep you guys from, from, from where you're at right now. Amen. So repentance has to come to bring us back to the specifications. But it's the heart of God, the desire of the Father that wants to bring you back and me back to his specifications for our happiness, for our peace, for, for the original intention that, that he had for us. We can't get there any other way. Amen. There's no other way to get where God wants you than have the overlay of his specifications on your life. Here's my life. Here's God's overlay. I have to conform to his so that it looks like this and not like this. And sometimes it does look like this, but this is what it's supposed to look like. The overlay of my life and Jesus, even in the garden, he, he said, not my will. He, 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 he saw the, he saw Calvary, saw the cross. He trembled, he sweated, he bled great drops of blood hard to do this sometimes it's really hard to do this mm -hmm. but he he knew he knew that it was god's will god's specifications he knew what was at stake he knew our salvation was on the line and he just did it mm -hmm. he conformed and said not your will not my will but your will he surrendered to the specifications of god for his life for his life and for our life. I will put a new spirit within you, God says, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. That's the spirit. So there's the specifications, there's the, there's the, there's the, there's the uh, heart of God, and then there's the spirit. When Jesus died on Calvary's cross, it was done. He, he went to heaven, and then he sent the spirit down to walk with us every day and say, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Surrender to, to my leading. I'll lead you in this way, in this way, in the holy highway of God's specifications. And you will dwell in the land that I gave your father. Such blessing. You look at America today, we are out of spec. This is not God's heart. Amen. This is not God's vision. It's not God's vision for us. This is not what he wanted. Amen. So there's only one way back, but there is a way back. It's not outdated. We have to come back to God's perfect specifications. God's intention for his rescued children is that we be conformed back into the image of God and have the stain of this world removed from us through the sanctification process. The stain of the world removed from us and the fresh stamp of God stamped upon our soft new heart. It's God's, it's, I stand here and tell you, honestly, it's, it's God's will. 
It's God's will for us, our sanctification Amen. And, and our conformity to, to, to the image of Christ to bring all things back into subjection with his will. We're going there, whether we like it or not. We do like it. We love it. Mm -hmm. But some people won't like it when God comes and fails this world and says, this is not what I had in mind. The great engineer and architect Amen. of everything Amen. comes and fails this world and says, this is not my standard. This is not how I wanted families to, what, to look like. This is not what I, we still have time. Jesus did it all. That's the message. We come back to God's way. I, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world or the standards of this world or the book of this world or the will of this world or the specifications of this world. Do not be conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Spiritual alignment. What am I striving for today? Am, am I in the specifications of God? Can I examine myself and say, does this line up? Does this line up? Honestly, was my heart, the things that I think about and do, does it line up? And if the answer is no, then, 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 then we ask God for the heart uh, and the desire. Lord, help me desire to line up with your, with your word and your will. Give me that desire because I believe it's right. If I don't believe it's right, give me that gift too where I don't keep looking back thinking, I gave up house, I gave up this, I gave up that for the kingdom, you know? I gave up the world specifications. Oh Lord, did I make a mistake? Was I, you know, and God said, no, my, you know, my standards are right here. So ask yourself today the questions, you know, and give yourself credit and be happy and say, sometimes it feels like we're not doing anything. But when you get to heaven and someone says, yeah, yeah, I found a new heart track in the bread aisle. That was you? Or the toilet paper aisle, whatever. I mean, so you just look back over your life and say, look how God has conformed you. Look what he's done so far. He that began a good work and you will bring it to completion. And so we rest in him, but we, we, we rest in that yoke and we, and we never, uh, never do away with the specifications. We are his workmanship in Christ Jesus, created for good work, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There is a highway of holiness and, 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 and the Bible says that the redeemed will walk therein and no crooked beast, no, no, no foul. They're, they're not allowed to walk in the way. They're disqualified. But God has qualified you by his, by the blood of his own son. So I encourage you today to walk in the way, to stay soft to God, to, to continue, me speaking for myself, to allow God to stamp his image upon us. Uh, some things die in our lives, but other things begin to grow as we, what dies in our life is the old book, the old book that we had uh, for our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how I was going to build my life, God. This is what I wanted. So dangerous yeah. to have two books, right? Sometimes I have two books and it's just dangerous. One's got to go mm -hmm. and one's got to just be open and ready and reading. One time, this is a small book and I'll finish here. This is a small book, but the, the specs for the, the new stores are about this thick. One time I went home on a weekend because I was bidding a $20 million job and I read it from cover to cover, you know, and I went to work on Monday and I'm like, can't do this, can't do that. Make sure you get this in the bin. And they were like, you're crazy. We don't want to hear any of that. But I was thankful. I was like, wow, I'm so enlightened right now because, <laughs> you know, because none of the guys read this book. You ask them where the spec book is. They're like, what, what, what spec book? What are you building out here? Well, I don't know. The, the carpenter said he knew what he was doing. Yeah. So you can't, you know, you, I, I always tell them when the truck backs up, you got to say, I don't want, you know, don't unload anything. Ask if that's the pressure treated lumber. Ask if those are the right valves. 
Because more than not, they're not. Somebody grabs something from the store and comes to the job. And then in the end, we're like, I don't know, Mr. Inspector. I don't know how that got up. I don't know how 100 pounds got in here. I was in a store one time and the lady said to CM, get him out of here. So we learned, we learned a hard lesson that day to shut water off, to shut gas off and change every valve. That's how I learned the name of those three valves. It's burned in my mind. <laughs> So that's the message today. We just have to pray that the church will put away its, its old spec book and bring back the, the specifications of God and that our legislators will do the same and that we from the pulpit and in person can go and demand that they, that they come back to God's way. It's the only thing that can, that can stem the tide of wickedness in the country. And so we'll close with that. Steve, would you pray us out? Father God, thank you so much, Lord. God, we thank you for the word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, God, help us, Lord, to grab onto this, Lord. And Lord, how it can influence us, Lord, for to influence others, Lord. God, to be used in this way, Lord. I pray, Lord, that, that you would use each and every one of us as this message really showed, Lord, um, that we do have a voice, we do have a place to stand. Um, to speak uh, the basic, it's the basic, the specs, Lord, that 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 work, mm -hmm. and the things that it, it's how's that go? It's just expressing how's that working for us? Mm -hmm. How's how's how is uh, how's this uh, the spec book working? Uh, it doesn't work because the parts don't work. The parts don't work. It's like you need to go back to the to the original. Mm -hmm. God help us, Lord, to go back to the original and actually uh, confront those people in authority, just as Brian was sharing in Scripture does. If the authorities who are supposed to protect us and guide um, civilization, supposed to guide um, countries and also cities and states uh, according to what your word says, yes. that's what the, the word of God says, Lord. And once they do they stop doing that, we have every right. Uh, especially in this form of government, Lord, to call them out. Mm -hmm. um, and I do thank you, Lord, for apology at church, Lord. We all do. Lord, and how bold they are and, and how, how how forceful they are, Lord, and, and how direct they are and, and polite they are. And, and it just, God, I just pray, Lord, that, um, that you would allow things like this, um, the, that spirit, Lord, to... Uh, really enter into these our city, to, to every city, Lord, uh, that we can change uh, with with your help and with uh, with your direction, with your Holy Spirit. Um, city, um, city councils can be changed, legislatures can be changed, Lord. When there's a when there's a stance that's being taken, it's like no, we're not going to cross this line. We're not going to go this any farther. Um, and that we're going to fall back to the things that are that are true, those things that are steadfast and true. And Lord, that is your holy word. That is your standard. That is the standard that used to govern this nation. God, we just um, pray and ask for that that you allow us uh, as a church, Lord, help us, Lord, as individuals in the church uh, to be able to. Be, be able to hear your voice, be able to, to hear your call uh, to take those stances uh, and to have the courage to do it. And then when we go before, just as John and Peter, Lord, Peter and John went before the mat, um, before the San Hinder, Lord, they just, they didn't know real quick they were going to say it. When they went there, boy, um, all, Amen. everything changed. That's right. Lord, and uh, God, I just uh, pray that you fill us, Lord, with that spirit, Lord, that Holy Spirit that dwells with Yes. Walk within them and walk within us. Lord, that we would just have that courage. Mm -hmm. You would have blessed us with that courage. Yes. Bless us with that wisdom. Yes. Bless us with that discernment. Bless us with yes. the, the hold up the specs and say, Amen. no, no, this is the, what you're legislating, what you're doing is not is not true. It doesn't work. It's fallacy. It's just, it's broken. It's broken. It can never be repaired. Mm -hmm. So God, we just pray that um, that every the, the specs that are that are perfect, the specs that are in uh, uniformity and uh, to what 
in what in how the church is built and how a nation is built. God, that's Amen. that's the specs that we need to hold on to. That's what's gonna hold this nation together, is your holy, is your holy specs, your holy words, Lord. And so God lead us mm -hmm. as we go into this time of prayer. Thank yeah. you, Lord, for the message Lord, yes. that you filled them Ryan with, Lord. And yes. thank you, Lord, for giving him the uh, clarity of speech, mm -hmm. Lord, and, and the scriptures and and uh and just how you allow him, Lord, to convey it. Lord, mm -hmm. I just pray, Lord, that that uh that you just um really really lord help us lord to be conformed uh into this yeah. message lord yes and uh, so god we're just grateful lord and how you really lay things out how grateful you are to encourage us how how, yeah. you, how you start yeah. to simplify things where we're like what do we do what do we do, what mm -hmm. do, we do? and it's like well okay let's let's, let's take it back to the <laughs> to the beginning here. <laughs> so god we're just grateful for that, Lord. You're really patient. Thank you, Lord. And God, just continue to be patient with us, Lord, and continue to strengthen us and guide us and, and encourage us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to give us the strength to move forward. Lord, to not stay where we're at, but to move forward. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, help us, Lord, as we go into a time of prayer. Yes. God, we just thank you so much in Jesus.